this is a rotational dynamics question. Um, we're given that um, a block is connected to a rope um, across a 50 centimeter diameter, so diameter, uh, 2 kilogram frictionless pulley. That means there's no friction in this axle, uh, as shown in this figure. Uh, a constant 10 newton force is, uh, or tension is applied to the other end of this rope. So what is the magnitude and um, it should say direction of the acceleration of the block. So we're asking, is this block um, accelerating up or down, and how fast is it doing that? Okay, so I'm going to label a couple things first. Um, so we're given this 50 centimeter diameter. That means that the radius of this thing is 25 centimeters. So I'm going to write it as 0.25 meters right off the bat and the mass of this. So this is m sub uh, pulley is um, 2 kilograms and this may be m sub block um, just for clarity. Okay so let's draw a free body diagram um, of each of these objects separately. So we'll do a free body diagram of the block first because why not. Okay so um, We'll draw our axis. Uh, we'll choose up to be positive, maybe. And uh, the two forces acting here are uh, weight, so F sub G, and a tension, T, acting straight up. Uh, and that's it. Um, so now we can draw a free body diagram for the pulley. And this is going to be an extended um, diagram, which just means it's not going to be a point, right? So we'll draw this as a circle, <coughs> and we'll draw the two forces acting on this. First though, so when we draw a free body diagram for something that's not, uh, so it's something that's a point, right? Um, we choose a direction to be positive, we chose up to be positive. So for here we're going to choose a direction to be positive. Um, our convention is to choose counterclockwise to be positive rotation. All right. uh, so we'll label this on this diagram just to be clear. Okay, so um, we'll label these two uh, forces. We have tension acting right here and we have uh, 10 newton force acting right here. And those are each uh, acting tangentially at the surface. So that means the distance here is the radius that we identified over here. And it's um, important to note that those are at a right angle, so those are going to be convenient. Um, so before we move on, I want to mention that um, this has a moment of inertia, uh, I, right? Uh, it's a disk, right? It's solid. So um, that's one half m pulley r squared. Okay, we're going to end up using that later. <clears throat> okay, so our next step is to uh, fill out Newton's second law. So I'm going to move the free body diagrams uh, out of the way so you can't see them, but uh, you can back the video up and, and reference those if you want. <coughs> so we're going to fill out Newton's second law, and we'll first start with um, maybe the block. So that's pretty simple for the block. Uh, the sum of the forces in the y direction is MAY. So we have tension minus the force due to gravity equals mass times the acceleration of the block. So this is, um, this is a very important point I want to make. Um, it's very tempting to look at this diagram and to say, oh, the tension in this rope must be equal to the weight of the block. That's only true. It's only true if the acceleration is zero. All right, and in general, uh, that's not necessarily the case. In fact, for this, we're asked to find A, so we can't assume it's zero. That means that tension and the gravitational force on this block are not equal, necessarily. Okay, that's very important. So um, I'm going to solve this for the tension. Uh, also, I'm going to make sure to label this as the mass of the block. Because right, we have two objects with mass in this problem. So uh, tension equals uh, 
mass of the block times acceleration of the block plus a mass of the block times g. Okay, so there's one equation. So now let's apply Newton's second law for the pulley. Um, and this is a uh, this is a rotating object, so I'm going to use the sum of the torques equals I alpha. All right. So the torques on this guy are. Um, let me move this down a little bit. There's a torque due to tension, and there's a torque due to this 10 newton force. They're both applied at R, and they're both perpendicular. All right. So each of those torques is going to be um, just R F, right? So uh, we'll fill that out here. We have, um, let's say, a torque. <coughs> due to tension plus the torque due to the 10 newton force equals I disc times alpha. Okay, so um, so the torque due to tension is, um, in our positive sense, it's counterclockwise. So that's going to be positive R times T. Um, the torque due to the 10 newton force is clockwise, so that's what we've called negative, so that's minus r times uh, 10 newtons. And the um, moment of inertia of this disk is half uh, mp r squared times alpha. So here's another equation. Okay, so let's look at these two equations and identify what we do not know. Okay, we don't know the tension. We don't know the acceleration, but that's what we're solving for. Um, again, we don't know tension, and we don't know alpha. So that's two equations, but three unknowns. All right, so we need an another equation. And what's going to help us here is to recognize that acceleration of the block and the angular acceleration of the pulley are related, right? Because they're, con they're connected by this rope. So if we remember, <coughs> um, tangential acceleration of a point on the outside of a, of a rotating object is related to the angular acceleration of that object, right? So if we recall that um, A uh, is alpha r. All right. So that's going to help us in this case. The acceleration of this block is the same as the acceleration of a point on the outside of this cylinder. All right, but there's a there's a problem. The problem is this. It's the way we've defined positive. If the block moves up, then the pulley rotates clockwise. So when the block moves in a positive direction, the pulley moves in a negative direction. So I need to include a negative sign in this relationship. All right. I could have avoided that by calling one of these the opposite. I could have called down positive for this, or I could have called clockwise positive for this. Um, either way, we have to deal with it. Um, this is just how I'm going to deal with it in this problem. So now I have a third equation that has two of the things I didn't know in it, uh, so I can solve this problem. So um, I'm going to label these equations 1, 2, and 3, and I'm going to combine Combining 1 and 2 and 3. Specifically, I'm going to write out 2, um, substituting 1 for t and 3 for alpha. Alright, so uh, I think that'll make sense when I do it. So I'll start with this r times t. t is um, the mass of the block times a plus the mass of the block times g. <coughs> Alright minus r times 10 newtons equals half m pulley r squared times uh, alpha. And alpha is minus a over r. Minus a over r. So again, I'm solving for a. And that's the only thing I don't know in this equation, so that's good. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to start by dividing by r everywhere. That's going to make my life um, much simpler. So this r goes away, this r goes away, and this r squared goes away with this r and the one I'm dividing. So um, what I get is this. 
mb times a plus mb times g minus r times 10 newtons equals half mp times a, and there's a minus sign on that. All right, so now I can move um, maybe, oh, it doesn't really matter at this point. Let's move this term over here and these two terms over there. All right, so what I get is I can multiply. I'm going to factor out the a in this step as well. So a times um, mb plus one half mp, all right, factoring out the a, equals r times 10 newtons minus mbg, right, because I subtracted both of those terms over here. So now I can divide by this, and what I get is a equals r times 10 newtons minus mbg, all divided by mb plus half mp. And I can plug numbers into this now. All right, so plugging numbers in, uh, this is 0.25 meters times 10 newtons minus uh, mass of the block is 1.5 kilograms times g all divided by mass of the block that's 1.5 kilograms <coughs> plus um, half of the mass of the pulley, which is 2 kilograms. And if you do all of that, what you get is minus 1.88 meters per second squared. So that's my answer. So what this tells me, I'm um, sorry, uh, so there's my answer, 1.88 meters per second squared, and it's negative. <coughs> what that tells me is that this block is actually falling, right? Even though you're pulling on this side, this is falling, which makes sense if you think about it. Um, both of these forces are applied to the same radius. So they uh, contribute to torque in the same way. And the force here is um, a little less than 15 newtons, right? Because g is about 10. So um, the force on this side is bigger than the force on that side. Um, and since they're applied at the same radius, the torques uh, balance out the same way. Okay.